Hello and welcome to ANC Decides, the show that gives you up-to-the-minute news and commentary building up to the ANC's elective conference. I'm your host, Mfundo Babalan. Let's start off with your headlines. The ANC NEC resolves to keep the case at NPC intact pending the appeal of the High Court ruling. This follows consultation with the current PC and the group that approached the High Court. ANC's Free State Provincial Executive Committee is not giving up on plans to have its elective conference in November. This despite a proposed moratorium on provincial conferences after September the 30th. Now in an exclusive interview with NN7, Matthews Porsa says he's in the ANC presidential race to win it. Porsa says he's been approached by other candidates but he won't settle for less. The ANC NEC has resolved to keep the case at NPC intact pending the appeal of the High Court ruling. This follows consultation with the current PC and the group that approached the Peter Maritzburg High Court. The NEC has decided to support the PC's appeal, stating that the court judgment has wide-ranging implications for the ANC beyond the case at borders. The ANC top brass wants to ensure that the constitution of the ANC is not misinterpreted. Meanwhile, the case at NPC says there's no question about the standing of the provincial structure pending that court appeal. The jury is now out on whether the parties can find each other while the appeal process is underway. It has a, a serious impact and it can set a very uh, a wrong precedent, not only for Wazul Natal, on the interpretation of the ANC constitution. I think it's also important to, to clarify this position, that we were taken to court because comrades were believing that uh, there were uh, many irregularities that happened prior to the conference and during the conference itself. We all know now that according to the judgment, it's clear that there was no material rigging or irregularities that happened in the conference. So it means the results of the eighth provincial conference, uh, it's a true reflection of the delegates and the true reflection of the participation of the branches. So the only thing, the only thing that the judges found was that the convening of the conference early was in contrary to the, uh, I mean, the constitution of the ANC. Judgment tended down by the Peter Marisberg High Court has very huge uh, implications for the organization. Because what it does, it takes away completely the powers of the National Executive Committee as the supreme organ of the organization that runs the ANC in between conferences. But it equally takes away the powers of the Provincial Executive Committee, where branches of the ANC in each province are accountable. So our view is that if we leave this judgment, it is not going to, only going to be having a negative impact to the ANC in Guazulu Natal, but it will affect the party as a whole. And we are convinced that uh, we shouldn't be complacent when something that uh, has happened, which we believe the judges, the judges have had in their interpretation of the ANC constitution, and our view is that that has got to be corrected. We're now joined by our reporter Nolutando Nkosi, who's out in case at end following the NEC's three-day meeting. Not a time, a very warm welcome to you. Now, we understand that everybody is now in support of that appeal, but beyond this, it seems that Mdumseni uh, Nduli was stressing that the issue is the misinterpretation of Section 17.2.1 of the ANC's Constitution. Can you just take us through his reasoning of the intention of that section? Good evening, Nomfondo, and good evening to the viewers at home. Right now, I have with me um, Dumseni Nduli, who was with us um, earlier on at the press briefing that the PEC held. It was um, Comrade Superzuma, the, the secretary, who actually brought up this little bit of legislation, saying that, um, in effect, 
three different courts could have three different interpretations of this particular legislation. So I have right now um, Dumseni Duli. He's just going to tell us more what this piece of legislation actually means and how it is that the three courts could actually have three different um, interpretations. Dumseni, just walk us through the, 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 the legislation itself and how it is that the, the courts could have three different interpretations. Well, essentially, there is a, a clause in the constitution of the ANC, uh, very, very popular these days. Uh, it's called 17.2.1. That clause uh, determines how a conference, other than an ordinary conference, can be convened. It says that uh, if you convene a conference uh, less than the time or ahead of the time at which it was due, at least there must be a third of branches in the province who are going to make that request. And that request is obviously going to be made to the Provincial Executive Committee and the National Executive Committee. Our view as a province is that inherent in that clause is the authority and the power of the PEC and the NEC upon receiving a request of the third of branches to either grant or disapprove, or even to decide in its own wisdom as a PEC or as an NEC, that given the circumstances, it's appropriate that a, a conference should sit ahead of time. That is why I was saying the interpretation of the, the full bench of the High Court in Peter Marisberg is a little bit uh, uh, limiting. It's not necessarily taking into account all factors that should be considered for the political party. Okay, as it stands, um, Dumseni, so no branches have actually approached the NEC or the PEC with um, this legislation, or have they in fact approached you guys? No, in the context of what happened in the conference in 2015, it was a decision of the Provincial Executive Committee then, which, uh, given the circumstances, decided that it would be appropriate to go to an early conference, and that decision was ratified by the National Executive Committee. So the bone of contention is whether or not that decision enjoys legitimacy in terms of the constitution of the ANC because it originated from a PEC and ratified by the NEC as opposed to it in terms of what that clause is prescribing, originating from the third of the NEC branches in the province. So our argument is that whatever its origin, ultimately the final determination would have been the National Executive Committee. In this case, the NEC had agreed that the conference must go ahead. And we are therefore arguing that, uh, and this is not an argument against Comrade who took the NEC to court, it must be understood in its proper context about ensuring that the NC constitution is interpreted in line with the NC's understanding. Thank you very much, Mdum Senin Duli. Over to you, um, Nom Fundo in studio. Thank you. No, thank you very much, Nolutando. We certainly know that that infamous now section 17.2.1 will certainly be discussed beyond just the two of us here. And now we move over to the Free State. The ANC Free State Provincial Executive Committee is not giving up on the plan to have its conference in November. This is despite a proposed moratorium on provincial conferences after September the 30th. The Free State PEC says its legitimacy can only be decided upon by the national leadership. This comes as the provincial structure's standing is being challenged in court. Meanwhile, the province says it will nominate its chairperson, Esma Khashula, as Secretary General of the ANC. It now remains to be seen if the ANC will grant the November conference and whose slate Mahashula will be on. When our conference could not sit, uh, we had to uh, convert it into a cadres assembly. Now, cadres assembly uh, was one important political education platform of the ANC in the province where we have called everybody uh, to come so that we talk about the ANC as we know it, as we love it. Uh, what is dividing us? What is uniting us? And how do we focus on the things that are uniting us uh, as the African National Congress? Part, part of what we did as, as a political program to unite the ANC in our province, we've continuously called throughout that everybody who is a member of the ANC must forward his or her membership to the secretary of the branch. We've gone all over the show. We've issued media statements. We've convened branches. We've done everything else. In fact, part of the political program that is unfolding is that the regional executive committee and PEC deployees have been instructed to convene branches throughout the whole province and brief them about this process of our conference not being able to, to meet uh, at least for the second time and the fact that now 
uh, we've got a go ahead and conference is sitting in November. The sense that we're getting from those interactions with the broad membership of the ANC is that the membership is ready and is willing to go to conference. We're now joined by reporter Giovanni Machani, who's out in the Free State. Giovanni, a warm welcome to you. Now, we'll certainly unpack that statement uh, in totality, but if we have to start with what is very interesting now, the nomination of the chairperson, Esma Khashule, to secretary general of the ANC. Now, the biggest question becomes on whose slate? We've heard them talk unity. So what is happening now? Definitely so. Good evening to you, Mfunda, and good evening to the viewers. We do know that uh, this year is a very busy year for the ruling party, being the ANC, knowing that there were a lot of events to go through this year on provincial levels, you know, branch levels as well, as nationally knowing that in December the ANC will be electing uh, their next president. And obviously going forward with that, the different levels of the ANC will then bring representatives forward. We do know on branch level the delegates will be chosen and that is who will be voting uh, come the December National Elective Conference. So we've heard from the Free State saying that they are backing Dr. Nkosazana Lamini Zuma as president, but they've also said that they are ready to go to their provincial conference where they will elect uh, Dr. Ace Mahashule as the chair of the province and then heading in to the December conference, they will bring up his name to represent uh, uh, the ANC nationally as uh, the SG. Knowing this, we do understand that with the combination of them backing uh, NDZ as president, while also bringing up the name of uh, Ndate Esma Khashule as SG, it brings a, a bit of complexities. But we did hear from uh, the provincial spokesperson that it is not about the people that you are working with, but the mandate, your ability to obviously provide for the ANC and the people which they serve. So definitely so. It does not matter which slate he will be on, but his name will be brought forth and according to the free state Ngosa Zana Jamini Zuma will be the next president. No, thank you very much Giovanni for that. We'll speak to you as days progress. That's our reporter there Giovanni Machani who's out in the free state. It seems the race is getting more interesting as days progress.